Mark Hadmaker here. Uh, we're going to continue on with our uh, continuing saga of talking about old school ways of throwing hands and, and hurting and all sorts of things. Uh, we recently been talking a good deal about how to destroy some uh, the incoming shots. We've been picking those things off, and there's more ways to exploit and work on that. Let's talk about one today that uh, if you've got a, an, an assailant who's not being as forthcoming with their shots or their wise to your game, what we can do uh, about that still cause some injury against some uh, good uh, in our defensive work without actually busting their hands up on someone's head. And we're going to look at some instances from uh, weapon era. We're going to look at some from the bare knuckle era. We're actually moving all the way to the glove era. And of course, we'll talk about a couple of drills that you can do uh, with your own heavy bag and how to you know make do with that. Not actually get into some loaded stuff. First of all, so we're going to be talking the tactics called attacking the buckler. First off, what is a buckler? Uh, I'm going to let an old, old school type hat stand in. If in the old days of sword fighting or sword staff, staff fighting, if you had a shield on your off hand, so in other words, if I'm right handed, I'm wielding the shield with this hand, the off hand would just holding the small shield. This is the buckler. So I got my hand on the outside. I pull this up to allow me uh, to have some defensive options, right? Right. Now, if we look at this, we see I'm holding this up in the buckler position. If I were in a, right here, if I get rid of this, my arm is up. Good boxing correlate, right? And it's no... Uh, uh, it's no mistake or, or, or a bit of chance that uh, the hands up in this position resemble very much our buckler. But there's only so many ways for the human body. Mm -hmm. So buckler with the actual shield or without is the same sort of thing. Actually, a lot of our early bare knuckle uh, pugilists, uh, particularly over in, uh, in England, uh, 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 Fig comes to mind. Whenever they're running some of their academies, they were also uh, teaching swordsmanship along the way, some quarter staff work and all this. So having Buckler play in there was, you know, part and parcel of what was going on. And so you're going to see lots of transfers back and forth. This is very much you hear very much how one in the Filipino martial arts, uh, how you play with the stick and the knife and the empty hand often correlates with some slight changes. Same thing in the old throwing hands tradition as well. So when the hands are up in this position, you can basically call this buckler a position. So a good boxing defense, we would call it buckler. We've already talked about drawing the box with your own defense, your own buckler, both hands up, forearms parallel. We want the elbows in, forming the box right here, no inverted V, opening up the bread basket, anything like that. So when we get their hands up in that position, we would call that good buckler. But even if someone's inverted V, if their hands are up, they're in a buckler position. So we're going to talk about attacking this line when it comes down. Uh, right down to also why would we attack the buckler? Uh, one, let's say if it actually were a sporting context where we've got extended rounds going on, someone's got some great defense, we might and they're not opening up the line for us, we might have to do a little bit of destruction to make the uh, the arms a bit heavy and drop this out of the line. Sometimes attacking the buckler can cheat something out of the way, open up the line we really wanted. And sometimes, particularly if you're bare fisted or you're loaded fisted, uh, the attacking the buckler in and of itself can do all the damage you want. And the early bare knuckle era is rife with instances of hand saving tactics, and amongst them, people uh, trying to not bust their hands too much on the heads. Uh, like uh, John Hayden versus uh, Tom Sayers comes to, uh, comes to mind in that fight, where we have these extended rounds where we've got Hayden who just constantly would work on the arm and get to a point where Sayers is a fine a fighter, eventually get to where he can't move that right arm anymore. He can't get this up into play. Now, we know in three confrontations, we don't have the option to constantly just wail away in the arm. We're just letting this be, like we talked uh, about before, the buckshot idea of what's going on. We're doing some knuckle busting. We're doing some cuffing. We're doing other blowaways as things are coming in. We're also attacking the buckers with coming in, perhaps not blowing our hands out on someone's uh, point of the chin or on the, on the skull. Yeah, we're looking for those softer targets. And often the softest target is going to be a lot of what's uh, is being used to defend. Uh, I think I alluded that this also tactic still stays into the glove era. We think about the great uh, Joe Lewis when he's fighting against Lee Ramage. I'm going to say it was his for his first, yeah, his first fight because he decided to trounce him in the second fight. First fight, he took him as well, but he was having a little bit more of a problem because you know Ramage was a really good defensive fighter, and he goes back to Joe goes back to his corner saying. Uh, you know, I, I just can't get through. I can't do anything with him. And, of course, Jack Blackburn, being the great coach and former fighter that he was, he says, well, he got arms, ain't he? And, of course, he was telling Joe to get back out there and just work that guy's arms, attacking the buckler. So whether it was actually with the sword, the bare knuckle, all of the gloved air, I mean, this is this all kosher. It all works out. Now, for us to work it well, uh, I would suggest, again, you're working in your heavy bag, you got a good imagination, you don't need me to tell you to pretend that there's arms on here, but if you want to, you know, get me on that, I'll use my poor, uh, 
uh, uh, uh, draftsman skills here. If I think about where the top of my shoulder is and bend those arms up a little bit, I can draw a little bit of a V. Let this stand in. Here I have the upper arm and here I have the forearm. Obviously, I would want to draw this down on both sides to get a full correlate for what's going on. But what we're looking at when we are attacking the buckler, we don't really want anything up here in the forearm area. We want all this tender meat to tricep, we want the deltoid, we want the bicep. And again, if you hit the forearm, it's okay, you're not gonna blow yourself out and you're not that you've done uh, yourself uh, no good. And, you know, sometimes eating up on this brachialis will do it as well. But I'm saying some good healthy shots in this upper arm area is what you're looking for. So if we draw this V on both sides of your bag and then you can switch this around and turn it back around so we had it facing us. So I know I'm facing on, I'm looking for my center line shots from here, but I am looking for these buckler shots on the outside. Two primary ways to attack that buckler, empty handed, we're gonna use a glove on this, let's glove up on one side and put on this nice little pink beauty. Uh, it's just standard working that hooking line on. And again, we're not gonna do a great form or anything like that because you don't have to, you're not doing the same kind of commitment as you're trying to get inside and get up to that uh, chin or jaw. So if it makes sense, I'm facing you, you've got good coverage. I can try and faint you out of position or I can just go straight off uh, you know, and cut to the chase and, and just work and beat and start making blood, uh, blowing out on that. It's not like you're just standing in front of the bag and standing in front of a human being trying to just blow away on the arms while you're doing all your other bag work. I'm just trying to make sure that you find those little shots in there occasionally. You've got that little visual mnemonic of how that's going to work out for you when you're playing that buck again. What you can also do uh, with this is do this as a sliding straight shot. Since it's really hook lines, it's going to be open for you. Don't even with the uppercut, is clearly you might blow into an elbow. If you get used to blowing the, uh, the uppercut of the bag, you need to get the human being, you blow out your own fist, right? right. Nobody wants that. So if that sliding straight will turn a little bit to the side and make, have it make more sense, is if I take any sort of sliding shot at the outside and put a little short shot off to that to that upper humerus side. So again, if I'm facing you with it, these hook lines make sense, but if the hook line's not working out for me, I can slide out and have a little short shot uh, straight down the line. And you don't have to throw a lot on these. Again, you're looking to you know, frog up some muscle, they said we call it in the south, maybe it's called frogging there. If you're relative, I don't know. A little bit of cow biting on it, putting some uh, pain on top of it the entire way. Another thing you can do, obviously, is to make that thing uh, loaded up. And again, we're back to that tactical torch that uh, TRS has. Nice, we've talked about punching that thing forward with this, this position for some of the knuckle busting. You can you know, pump it forward this way, obviously, the torch isn't the only way to go. Anything you got around for it. But to blow that out, again, I'm going to take this out of the play here because if not, do not do this on your bag because I don't care if it's a ballpoint pen, the tactical torch, whatever, you will wind up poking holes in it. Now, if you've got old bags you're trying to get rid of, you know, triple wrap them in duct tape and then go to town on them, and that will last you about five, six training sessions. You're going to be done with it. But when you're doing that inside position here, you got to think about it's going to be coming across with the inside of the fist, so you won't blow nearly as hard. Because if so, you're going to start you know, cocking that wrist out of play. The same thing, you got that fake torch in here, and you're putting that nice little puncture wound in there. So you're both bruising up and adding an actual mu a muscle puncture on top of that muscle. So attacking the buckler. If they're not being forthcoming and you're not able to use your cuffing and your knuckle busting skills on it, it doesn't mean all is lost. You just go straight to work with it, whatever's there. It's kind of like the closest web and closest target sort of thing. Often those hands drop low, opens up that jawline, opens up that bread basket, you're good to go. Thanks for watching our video lessons here at TRS Direct. Hit the like button down below and consider subscribing to our channel here on YouTube. Hit the bell icon and we'll send you a notification when there's a new lesson available. Thanks again for watching.